my topic is human capital and supply chain teacher resignations. And hold on a second. Just to give you a little introduction and in, uh, why I picked the topic, uh, I was a teacher for 13 years in a middle school in a county in Maryland. Uh, I taught at two different schools. And throughout my career, I noticed a high turnover rate uh, at both of my schools. And based on my research, I found out that the middle school level, when compared to elementary and high school, <clears throat> did have the highest rate of resignation. So high 7% for middle and low uh, 6% for elementary and high school. And one second. So, you know, I read the news and listen to the radio and common expl explanations for teacher resignations are usually like salary, standardized testing, paperwork. And one of the reasons why I picked this topic is because I kind of noticed a disconnect, at least at my level of middle school in the county I taught, a disconnect between popular explanations and uh, what's actually happening in the public school system. Okay. So this is related to supply chain management um, in the industry sector. You can, the traditional supply chain process would be to acquire raw materials, manufacture a product and deliver that product. In education, you could think of it as students progressing from grade to grade and becoming a high school graduate would be the final product. Um, there's human capital in every stage of the process. Um, I think for education, the most valuable human capital uh, are teachers from what they do on a daily basis for grading, you know, setting rules, uh, all that stuff. And uh, one of the main, I say, responsibilities as a supply chain specialist would be to identify problems, eliminate inefficiencies, cut costs, save time and streamline. So any area that sees uh, delays or disruptions would be targets for improvement. Um, so that's why I picked uh, resignations. And finally, uh, you know, when the human capital is constantly disrupted with resignations, the county will not be able to produce its best product. Uh, my problem statement, why do middle school teachers in the county resign? What are the root cause or causes for resignations? There was a lot of literature on this subject, so I tried to condense it into the three main points that uh, relate best to this paper. Uh, the first thing, uh, research shows that this is a national problem. Um, some estimates have uh, half the teachers will resign within the first five years. On top of that, 20% of undergraduate teaching programs had a significant decline in enrollment. And then every school district and region has its own specific issues. Um, just one example would be uh, like teachers in urban school districts report higher stress levels than other uh, regions. Uh, the main factors that correlate to resignations would be burnout and lower job satisfaction. So if you're emotionally exhausted, that'd be a symptom. And then finally, uh, and importantly, uh, for the middle school level, uh, research says that disruptive behavior peaks during middle school. Peer influences are especially strong and academic performance and engagement dramatically decline. And then uh, coping skills are just starting to emerge. So that brings us to the data. So basically the county I worked for, every two weeks they would publish who resigned. And on that report, it would say, it would tell you who, who resigned, what subject they taught, uh, where they taught, what school, and how many years of experience. So basically I'm gonna look at the data in four different ways. And then uh, just calculating the rate uh, for this school year, I was able to go to each, there's 30 middle schools. I was able to go to each uh, middle school and figure out how many teachers they 
employed this year. And I just divided the resignations um, by that number. So the first, first one, as you can see, uh, these are the middle school resignations over the last five years, except for the beginning of the pandemic. It's been pretty consistent. And I attribute that to a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it was like a little uncertain for the job market. So you might be a little hesitant uh, to resign. And then honestly, like I thought teaching during virtual could arguably be easier for for middle school teachers, and just in my opinion. But other than that, it's been, it's been pretty consistent. Another concerning uh, piece of data I saw were over half of the resignations occurred within the school months. And, you know, logically, it's just, it's a lot more challenging to deal with resignations when it's happening mid-year, as opposed to if it's happening in the summer months. Uh, next, I looked at each individual school, and these are the average annual resignation rates per school. And for privacy reasons, I didn't put the name of the school, but there's 30. Um, as you can see, there were three that had an annual average rate of over 10%, and then another like five to seven that were like eight or 9%. And I would label these as like challenging or troubled troubled schools. Next, I looked at the subject they taught. So um, the top five, and these are total number of resignations over the last five years. And there were 20, over 20 different subjects taught. But the main resignations, over 100 for English and reading, uh, special ed was second, uh, foreign language, math, and science all in the in the top five. And then this leads to years of experience when resigning. This was definitely the most telling. And what I found out was that basically over half of the resignations happen within your first three years. And then 69%, close to 70% of the resignations happen within the first four years um, of teaching. So that obviously tells you that like their preparation could be improved. So in addition to looking at the data, I created a survey. Um, the survey was completed by 31 teachers and of, of the teachers, they've represented 10 different schools and it was seven questions. So the first question was, how much of a problem do you think teacher resignations are? Of the 31 uh, participants, 30 of them said it was either a crisis level or a big problem. So if you are a teacher, you definitely think it's a big issue. So the next question was, what do you think contributes most to middle school teachers resigning? There's a lot going on on this page. So I basically highlighted the top eight. Um, and you could select as many as you wanted but the top were class size, disruptive students, which I'll get into a little bit later, ineffective disciplinary action um, for students, insufficient institutional support, uh, student lack of interest, and teacher duties like lunch coverage, class coverage, morning duty, afternoon duty. Those were the top eight. Um, so then I had them rank you know, first to third, uh, what, what they think their main reasons for resigning were. And I basically, on the bottom of the page, I explained how I did that. But I mean, it's very clear, disruptive student behavior doubled the next, uh, next closest one, which is, was insta insufficient institutional support, and then student lack of interest, being on their phones, not doing work, no motivation, which is all kind of related to disruptive students. And just, just so you know, you know, I had a, a wide variety of uh, teachers respond, you know, uh, how long have they been a teacher? I had everyone, I had a lot of range in this. 
And then what subject do you teach? I had a lot of perspectives. I had 10 subject, 10 uh, subject areas respond. So like I said, a lot of viewpoints, a lot of experience, a lot of perspectives. And then of the 31 responses, half of them, about half resigned, about 40% still teach middle school, and then another 10% have transferred to another level. So this takes us into the analysis and definitely like to acknowledge that you know, there's a wide variety of reasons for resignations, some which I didn't go over. I mean, some people move, some might be called to the military, some transfer counties and still teach at that level. So there's a, there's a wide variety just to acknowledge that. But having said that, I think the data definitely shows some regular, regularities and patterns. And I think it's quite clear the data indicates that the root cause of teacher resignations is disruptive behavior. And I classified that as uh, making it difficult for the teacher to deliver planned instruction, students yelling, physical and verbal fights, coming to class late, and any sort of insubordinate behavior. Um, and the, the root cause of the resignations is intensified when you teach at one of 10 identified schools, you teach one of five to six subject areas, and then most importantly, if you're an inexperienced teacher, the root cause is, is intensified. So this brings me to my recommendations. Um, all, the, all my recommendations are aimed at reducing stress and teacher burnout, which um, is caused by disruptive behavior from students. So my first recommendation would be a mentor teacher program. Now, when I first became a teacher, I had a mentor teacher, but I never met him. I think we emailed once or twice. I never saw him. I don't even know what we emailed about. But to make it work, you would need a teacher in, in your school, like with 10 years of experience that's familiar with the kids, you know, an accomplished teacher to basically co-teach, kind of uh, help plan, help do behavior management, um, and just kind of like be like an assistant coach almost. I think that would definitely help teacher burnout for new, new hires. Um, reduce the workload or classes. A standard middle school teacher teaches three classes a day for 90 minutes. And I think if you were to lower it to either five classes every two days or even two classes a day for 90 minutes, I think that would also be very helpful. Um, an incentive program for teacher transfers. So I thought that in the quote unquote good schools, if you have like accomplished, you know, like excellent teachers at good schools to offer a, a money incentive to transfer to the quote unquote troubled schools. And this, I don't know what it would be like 10, $20,000 more or something. But I think that it would have two benefits. Um, number one, it would, it would open up positions at, at better schools for new teachers to transition into. And then secondly, the second benefit would be, it would hopefully break the cycle of like new teachers getting hired in challenging schools, getting burned out quickly, and then resigning. Um, I think there needs to be more behavior management training during undergrad. Like when I was an undergrad, I don't, we did not take a class in behavior management. And that is like the main thing that you should really be focused on as a first year teacher. Um, and then the last one is just better institutional support. Um, maybe better policies for behavior management, smaller class sizes help, um, just overall more support. And that just uh, brings me to the conclusion. Um, just like I mentioned before, if human capital in the supply chain is constantly disrupted with resignations, you will not produce your best product. And then lastly, in, in regard to the recommendations, 
Uh, investing in the recommendations will likely reduce time and resources wasted on dealing with teacher resignations. So I, I understand like the recommendations, you'd have to hire more teachers, um, but it would hopefully balance out with uh, waste. And uh, that's it. Any questions?